been great. I'm going to say thanks. You sure you're not going to throw up or? <laughs> You good? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do a mock test. We're going to be driving for about 45 minutes. We'll be doing an in, uh, independent drive. So we'll yeah. use the sat nav a bit later. Uh, we'll be doing the maneuver and we'll cover your show me, tell me questions, everything that you need to know, obviously, for your real exam. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Any questions for me before we get started? No. Right. So all the good marks are going to be up here in green. All the driver faults advisory will be up here in amber or yellow. And then all the serious or dangerous driver faults, if any, will be marked up here in red. Right, Michael, what I'd like you to do now is drive on when you're ready, please. Welcome to Two Day Pass, Two Day Crew, and if you're new, an extra special thank you to you. So Michael's off to a very good start here doing his all-round observations and signaling for other road users as this will show his intentions and cause benefit. That's the way the examiners will look at signals, so make sure you signal if you believe it will benefit other road users. Lovely. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn left. So Michael has very good routine as he approaches junctions and the routine is mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. And you can see here how Michael does a very good job of his observations, checking right, left and right again, mainly for obscured traffic like motorbikes. So that's why we must always double check the right side as it's the most dangerous and we may have obscured traffic, i.e. motorbikes. At Two Day Pass, we go the extra mile, giving you, the viewer, the best possible angles to learn to drive. As you can see, the distance from the curb here isn't great. We'll address this issue a little later. And again, at the end of the road, turning left. Checking the mirrors, internal, external, signaling, very good routine. Always mirrors first, signal second. Now we're running into the position. This is the correct position. Roughly a meter or a door width from the actual curb. Amazing observations here, multiple checks, right, left, right being the bare minimum. Now look at the clearance from the pedestrians here with the oncoming traffic. Would you have got this close to the pedestrians? Is it safe? What would you do in hindsight? Michael, shortly we're gonna have a set of two roundabouts. At the first roundabout, I'd like you to turn right, and at the second roundabout, turn left. Are you starting to get nervous as we're approaching a set of two roundabouts? Remember to take your time. Michael's slowing down here, allowing space for the oncoming traffic as the width of the road is very narrow. We must keep that one meter from the left as you can see Michael's doing an amazing job. Now we refocus for the roundabouts. So just to repeat the directions, first roundabout turn right, second roundabout turn left. At this roundabout, we call it an open junction, as the visibility is not impaired, and you can see the traffic clearly to the right-hand side. Michael leans and looks around the pillar inside his car to get a good view, as this is an obstruction and can cause a blind spot. The second roundabout is coming up, where observations are usually forgotten, as people don't identify the second junction, as the two roundabouts are super close. This is important as observations at junctions are still the number one reason why people will fail their driving test. Okay, Michael, we're just going to follow the road straight ahead. Michael's vehicle has drifted into the right lane, obstructing traffic. This could potentially be a serious or dangerous driver fault. On this occasion, Michael has received an advisory driver fault for lane discipline. He regains the left lane and continues to follow the road ahead. On this occasion, no other road users were obstructed. Okay, Michael, um, I'd like you to answer your tell me question, please. Would you be able to tell me what the road legal tyre requirements are, please? 1.6 millimetres, and they shouldn't have any cuts or bulges in them. Lovely answer, thank you very much. Nice answer from Michael on his tell me question. The tread depth must be a legal requirement of 1.6 millimeters, and we do not want any damage to the tire, i.e. cuts or bulges. Each tire that is not road legal, you may receive up to three points and a fine. This is very important considering if you've just recently passed your driving test, receiving six points within the first two years, you can be disqualified and have to do both exams, theory and practical, again. 
Would you like to win a free driving test and avoid the queue of up to five months or even longer, depending on what part of the UK you live in? Then why not enter our competition, which is giving away a free driving test booking? To enter, you must subscribe to the channel and write down in the comments below, free driving test. If you want to just come and enjoy the experience of having a two-day intensive course in West London for automatic only and have your test fast-tracked, then please go and view twodaypass.com for more information. So again, to enter the competition, subscribe, write down below, free driving test in the comments, and you will be entered. A random winner will be chosen once we reach our next benchmark of 1,000 subscribers, which will currently be 4,000 subscribers. We're not far off, so hurry up, subscribe, and write down in the comments, free driving test to enter the competition. Good luck. Michael, what I'd like you to do is just find a place to pull up on the left, please. Maybe just before the next parked car. Don't worry about the yellow line. Um, okay, just after the next parked car then, please. We just want to stop on a single yellow. So if you just pull up just after this car on the left. Keep a reasonable distance when you pull over to stop on the left. Because if you hit the curb or mount the pavement, you may receive a serious or dangerous driver fault and fail your driving test. All right, lovely. Okay, what we're gonna do now, Michael, we can leave the engine on, that's fine, is we're gonna start your independent drive. We'll be using the sat-nav. I'll give you directions just for this roundabout because these two blue lines are slightly overlapping. So as you can see, the white arrow is pointing straight. So we'll be going straight at the first roundabout and then I'd like you to do your best to follow the sat-nav. Any questions? No, I'm good. All right, when you're ready, your drive on. When approaching a roundabout, look to see if you can see across to the opposite side, as there may be an oncoming vehicle which will block and prevent the traffic on your right from going. You may be able to use this as an opportunity to proceed. As you can see, Michael just did this, and it's an excellent sign of experience, and it's what the examiners would like to see, showing that you're planning ahead effectively. Here Michael has a cycle lane on the left hand side and he's maintaining his distance and not crossing the broken white road markings. We mustn't cross the road markings unless it's safe and necessary and Michael's doing a good job of leaving the cycle lane open for any cyclists that may come along. Next you'll notice two pedestrians hidden behind a park van on the left. They see Michael and he adjusts his speed and recognises that the pedestrians are staying stationary. He maintains his progress and follows the road ahead. This is an excellent sign of experience, as Michael's most likely seen this situation before. If you are going to stop, you must check your interior mirror to make sure it's safe to apply firmer brakes. How's the temperature? You cool? Yeah, that's right. All right, let me know if it gets too hot or cold. Now the traffic light is flashing amber and we know green's about to come after, Michael prepares the car. He's keeping a safe following distance from the lead vehicle, which enables him to read the road clearly, looking out for any keep clear zones, yellow boxes, or pedestrian crossings. Also keeping a safe distance from the lead vehicle will enable you to see the pavements more clearly and scan for any pedestrians which may try to cross the road like we had earlier. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A410, Duxbridge Road. The roundabout coming up has two lanes on the approach. Michael chooses the correct lane to follow ahead second exit. And he maintains the left lane throughout the roundabout, as you're about to observe. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. The vehicle in front drives straight down the middle of the roundabout. 
This is incorrect lane discipline. See here how Michael maintains the left hand side and does not obstruct the right hand lane. This is 100% correct. Congratulations, Michael. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A410, Duxbridge Road. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Now at this roundabout, you'll notice the correct lane discipline again demonstrated by Michael. 100% using the left lane, not obstructing the right hand side at all and following the lane until he reaches his exit. Shortly after exiting, two lanes become one. Michael checks his mirrors effectively, makes sure it's safe and changes lane. After 200 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, Courtney Avenue. Sorry, my back hurts, I'm just moving. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. As you go round a roundabout, it's a very good habit to have to check your interior and left exterior mirror at every exit. This will create more awareness of any vehicles following. Michael receives a driver fault here as he exits the roundabout. He checks his mirrors after signaling and this is a driver fault for mirror checks before signaling. Take the exit, Courtney Avenue. After exiting this roundabout, Michael builds his speed. We do exceed the speed limit and Michael receives a driver fault for use of speed. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, Long Elms, then take the second left. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, then take the second left. After 200 yards, turn left, Headstone Lane. Turn left. Here Michael receives another driver fault for junctions observations, as the minimum observations at any junction is right, left and right again. Am I ever getting old? Well, that's a given. Or I'm turning into a geek. Maybe both. But I love this next part here. Michael has worked so hard on his clearance from obstructions and on a long left bend like this one that you're about to see, it's very, very common for people to get way too close to the curb. But here you can see he maintains roughly a meter's clearance from the curb all the way around the left bend. Congrats, Michael, you have been working hard and it's nice to see that it's paying off. Well done. Yes, so Michael, that's the end of your independent driving. Thank you. 
and I'd like you just to follow the road ahead and I'll give you directions from now on. Cheers. Looking ahead, we can see less space and bonus points to anybody that can finish this sentence. Less space, less speed. And this is helping Michael with his clearance to obstructions. As you can see, he reduces the speed effectively. This is called an appropriate speed, which allows him to judge the distance between the hazard on the left and the hazard on the right. I'd like you to take the next road on the right, please. There are many different methods for judging your clearance from the left and right hand side of your vehicle. You may be shown reference points from your driving instructor or have a car that gives you visual or audio aids. Yeah, it'll just be this road here. We are in a school area and we have an ice cream truck coming up on the left. Looking under, over or through vehicles can help you to plan for any pedestrians which may step out. Scanning the road ahead for zebra poles with Belisha beacons on top is a good way to identify a pedestrian crossing. Be prepared for parked vehicles to suddenly open their doors or pull away without any warning as in indications. There's a possibility that pedestrians can be obstructed by the parked vehicles, so looking under, over or through windscreens of these vehicles can help you to plan for any developing hazards. Here we're following the road, but there aren't any road markings, so we're just going to follow round to the left, please. Bit of a random question, but did you see how many Oreos that guy had in the back of his car? No, I was the looking. whole trunk was full of Oreos. <laughs> I was not looking. That's what he's kidding. Yeah, they're gonna have a good time. At the end of the road, turn right. After you turn right, pull up behind the parked car on the left, please. Just allow room for people to pass. It does not need to be perfect. So just get yourself somewhere on the left. This will do, and just stop us here. Amazing. Thank you, Michael. All right, just secure the car, leave the engine on because that keeps the air conditioning going. Uh, here we have a U-turn, so I'm going to ask you to join the dual carriageway on this half. There's a gap in the central reservation where I'd like you to do a U-turn to the opposite side of the dual carriageway. Any questions? No. When you're ready, drive on. Actually, just keep the brake on for me. I'm just going to pop this away. Thank you, when you're ready.
Michael positions close to the grass in the central reservation, which leaves a gap from the centre line down the dual carriageway. He adjusts his approaching speed to an appropriate speed, which helps him to keep a safe position and control of the vehicle. We are going on to the left-hand side of the gap in the central reservation, as there are no arrows or road markings showing us where to position. This allows the oncoming vehicle to position along the right-hand side of Michael's vehicle. This is an offside to offside position, which is quite common in crossroads. Michael is now very vigilant to scan the oncoming traffic and wait for a safe opportunity to emerge. The best question to ask is, would I walk out? When you would walk out, this is a safe opportunity to drive out. Michael notices the beckoning of the oncoming vehicle, but knows it's not safe to emerge as there's undertaking traffic. He reassesses the situation, watching this vehicle carefully, and sees an opportunity to emerge. We now want to keep to the left-hand side of the road. And just continue to follow the road ahead, please, Michael. We are approaching a 40 mile an hour speed change, yet the speed of our vehicle goes over the limit before we reach the change of speed sign. This is a serious fault for use of speed. For one of my driving tests, unfortunately I was not successful and I received a serious driver fault for being at 25 miles an hour, 10 meters before the change of speed sign to 30 miles an hour. Here I'm trying to help Michael. Sometimes examiners do this. I'm trying to give him a lifeline and jog his memory as into what lane he must be positioned in for normal driving. Not heeding the clue, and moving back over to the left hand lane, which is the correct position for normal driving on a dual carriageway, providing it's safe and free to use the left hand lane, we must use the left hand lane. And Michael receives a serious driver fault for positioning normal driving. Now we'll be approaching around about a little bit further down. Um, at the roundabout, I'd like you to turn left, first exit. To all of those subscribers, a very big thank you to you. And for my last survey question of knowing the best camera angles, I really took it all to heart. Bring out the 360 camera, put it on the roof to try and give you the angle here so that you can see into the right hand side and judge the traffic for yourself so that you can learn when it's a safe opportunity to emerge at the junctions. And Apple have released a new operating system which renders my 360 camera obsolete as the software is no longer compatible. So I'm going to try to work a camera angle for you guys for the next video. Hopefully that will be useful. And if there's any more suggestions, please do put them down in the comments below as I love to make material like this to help you learn and pass your driving test first time. Okay, we're gonna do a show me question. So when it's safe, I'd like to show me how you'd beat the horn. Probably not a good time to ask actually, Michael. So could you refrain from beeping the horn That's just for the moment? <laughs> yeah, let's wait until the road starts moving again. We've got lots more roads, so. Just keep driving for now. Right, we'll try that again. So when it's safe, I'd like you to show me how you beat the horn. Thank you very much. Some vehicles may have an audio aid to alert you to speed limits. Hearing this can be useful on your driving test. Reacting to it and slowing down will avoid you receiving a serious driver fault for use of speed. We're going to be following the road straight ahead at the traffic lights. Shortly after, there will be a set of two roundabouts. At the first roundabout, go straight, and at the second roundabout, turn left. 
please. Planning early for the first roundabout so that you're in the correct lane for the second roundabout is important. And Michael knows this. So he does a mirror signal maneuver routine once he passes the next parked vehicle on the left so that he can join the left lane to go straight at the first roundabout and be in the correct lane for the second roundabout to turn left. However, his left signal stays on and he receives a serious driver fault for signals correctly as this would mislead the vehicle on the left and they may emerge believing Michael was turning left first exit at the first roundabout. If you are using your signals to change lanes, make sure you disengage the signal before going straight ahead at the roundabout. Okay, shortly after the invisible speed sign and the invisible speed bump, a bit further down, we're turning right. So I'd like to take the next road on the right, please. What do you believe is the reason for the next serious driver fault for clearance obstructions as Michael narrowly misses hitting our side mirror along the side mirror of the parked vehicle? Oi. That was very close, Michael. Okay, I'd like to take the next road on the left, please. Rosen Hill. Okay, and just after this parked car, I'd like to pull up on the left, please, in the convenient place. Unless your examiner asks you to, avoid stopping in front of driveways or drop curbs, as this is a driver fault for position normal stops. Okay. Uh, leave the engine on. We're going to do your parking manoeuvre. So what I'd like to do is move out, stop parallel to the BMW in front, and then when it's safe and you're ready, reverse park. Okay.
Unfortunately, Michael's rear near side tyre mounts the pavement. That means we're going over the kerb. And this is a serious driver fault for the reverse park exercise under control. Okay, when you're ready and it's safe, drive on. And then just again, just pull up on the left. Don't worry about the driveway, so pull up on the left here. Leave about a car length between you and this vehicle. And that will do. And then again, when you're ready, safe, drive on. And at the end of the road, turn left, please. Right on the right, please. And find a convenient place to pull up on the left. Okay, um, we'll leave the engine on just to keep us nice and cool. That is the end of your mock driving test. Uh, How do you feel that went? Um, all right. Pretty Good. Well. All right. Do me a favour, just for the audio, we'll just cancel the signal. All right. What What do you mean? What areas are you um, talking about? More on the left side, parked vehicles. Okay. Yeah, You're doing very well actually with the left side of the park vehicles. You've made a lot of progress on that, so that's really good. Um, anything else? Um, maybe speed sometimes. Yeah, that did come up. Well done. Yeah. That's about it, I think. Okay, brilliant. Um, so, would you like me to go over the results yeah. for you? Okay, Michael, unfortunately on this, re uh, this occasion, you haven't passed, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, the reason was, uh, you mentioned it, speed. So you went a little bit over the speed limit. So in total, um, driver faults, the advisory driver faults, the minor ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's average, mm. seven's average, that's good. Okay, um, and then the serious uh, driver faults here, um, there isn't really any dangerous, okay? Uh, one, two, three, four, five six okay um i'll try to go over these in no you know what i'm not even going to go over them in order but i will try my best okay all right um speed you talked about uh george the fifth avenue the dual carriageway just after you did your u-turn mm. there's a 30 road on the dual carriageway and in the distance we can see a 40. yeah before we got to the 40 sign, we reached 35 miles an hour. So I just looked down, because it went ding dong, it drew my attention. Yeah. I looked down, it was 32, and it went 33, 34. Mm. And right where the sign is that says 40, it reached 35. Mm. That means that we've actually still done, and I have to be very careful about what I say, but we've still done 35 miles an hour in the 30 zone, mm. technically. Yeah. So that would have been a bit more over the speed limit, which would result in a major serious driver fault. So not major, serious driver fault. Okay. Um, there was two for speed. Um, after, so just before, just 
for change to 40. That's what I just mentioned. And then there was another occasion uh, that we were 34 on a 30 as well. Mm. It's, a little, it's going up. Yeah, you know, yeah. I have to be careful about what I say. It's still over the speed limit, okay? Yeah. Right. Um, clearance to obstructions. Yes, there was one parked car. I made a big deal out of it. You heard me say, oh, really close there. Yeah. Um, I was going to grab the wheel. And I thought, let me give him the benefit of the doubt. But he still kept going a little bit in there. So, yeah, it got pretty close. All right. Um, the There's another serious fault for signal when uh, incorrect signal. Okay. So we reached the two double roundabouts at the end. You know, the last two roundabouts we did. Yeah. Remember the directions? Yeah, one um, straight and left. Good. Yeah. When you changed lanes to come back into the left lane, yeah. the signal stayed on, the left signal, because yeah. you changed lanes. Yeah. Then you went straight ahead on the roundabout. Oh, yeah, could have made them feel yeah, there was a lady coming out of Tesco's, which is mm. a superstore on the left, and I put my hand up like that while your signal was still on, just to kind of warn her, mm. you know, whoa, hang on, because we're going to go straight. I didn't want to touch your signal, I didn't want to touch your steering, let you do it, because I don't know, maybe you turn left into the superstore. <laughs> Absolutely fine, but we didn't. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's a serious for the signal because mm -hmm. that lady might have drove out in front of us seeing a left signal on. Okay. So the two for speed, one for the clearance of the parked car, one for the signal that was incorrect. Uh, back to George the Fifth Avenue. Uh, position for normal driving. While we were driving down the dual carriageway, just going straight. This might be muscle memory. This happened to another student that off camera I was talking to you about, okay? Um, and she failed her first exam because she stayed in the right lane on the dual carriageway. The reason why I said it might be muscle memory, because we've been training, doing the right turn through the yeah, central, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Though we've already completed that, and now we're just going straight, aren't we? We did our U-turn, we're just yeah. going straight. So what lane do we want to be in? On the left. But yes. I, we, I didn't. You said before that. So we had we done our U-turn, and yeah, then but I you just never said it was going straight. That's when I moved to the right lane. All right, good one. I'm glad you said that. So when you look back at the video, yeah. <laughs> I said to you, "Oh no, no, Mike. Now we're just going straight because you started leaning over to the right, yeah. and I knew you were going to change lanes. So I was like, "No, no, no. We're just following the road straight ahead." Oh, and I still done it. And you still did oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay, moving on. Last one. All right. Um, I can go over the minors if you want. Sorry, driver faults. They're not minors. Uh, off camera, just to save time. Um, they're all there on the video for people that have watched, so I can just turn them off to, to you. The reverse parking. I don't know if you noticed, your tyre was up the pavement. Your back left tyre. So the camera, I've got a camera near the back, le uh, back left tyre. Mm. It will probably still show you the car on the pavement. Even though it's not behind the back tyre, you were, you, were, you were up the pavement enough that the camera will probably highlight it. So that's a nice little feature as well. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, that is it. Now, this isn't doom and gloom because a bad dress rehearsal makes for a good play. Yeah. That means you screw up the day before, you won't screw up on the day because <laughs> you know what you're doing and you yeah. know how to move and correct and, mm. yep, that's it. Um, if anybody's liked the video, appreciated Michael's effort here to try and help people, leave that thumbs up. Yeah. I've been, I was gonna say I've been Michael, <laughs> that's been Scott. <laughs> stay safe, stay tuned, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.